Right, a message to Niall Ranger here. Yeah. All he's done is brought shame on our club by um, getting arrested, posting pictures of himself on the internet holding guns, acting like some sort of f***ing wannabe gangster rapper. You can imagine what I'm, what I'm f***ing talking about here. Yeah. A scumbag, right? You know what it is? Take pictures with your f***ing gun acting like a gangster rapper. I hope you're f***ing better at shooting that gun than you are the f***ing football because you're f***ing shit. You f***ing useless cunt. Mention the name Niall Ranger to any English football fan and they're likely to reference a range of off-field offences and theatrics rather than a noteworthy performance or goal. At just 19 years old, Ranger had managed to sign a five and a half year contract with one of the biggest football teams in the Premier League, Newcastle United. However, fast forward to 2021, we find the 29 year old now playing in the 7th tier football league. What happened to Ranger over the last decade? Let's find out. Before we start, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Born in Wood Green, North London, Ranger began his football career at Crystal Palace Football Academy and formed part of the ProTech Football Development School, which operates as a trials and development centre. His talent was recognised from early as he was scouted by Southampton within a few weeks. However, his career was almost over before it began because at just 15 years old, Ranger was arrested and sentenced to 11 weeks in the Young Offenders Institute for his involvement in armed robbery. This event would signal the start of a reoccurring theme in Ranger's career as he continued to take one step forward and two steps back. Despite his wrongdoing, Ranger's skill on the pitch was clearly unmatched as Southampton decided to reserve his position while he was still behind bars. But sadly, it seemed Ranger's detention did nothing to change his mentality as he was later released by Southampton for stealing football kits. Let me just tell you what happened. Yeah. The academy director said, you lot can take a few things, you're allowed. You understand? Mm. Yeah. I heard that, I said, hold on. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna take the piss. I <laughs> took everything. A couple more taking, couple t-shirts here, couple t-shirts there, man. Yeah. Everything, and I hid my bag in my bush, innit? <laughs> Thinking that it's gonna still be there, bro. And you, and you know what's mad, what smacks it? When I, when I had to have a meeting, like, cause I, when I left, we broke up and that, I had to have a meeting, bro. And then when I went into this meeting, they showed me on the CCTV running with this bag and that. Like. But somehow, this pitfall would work in his advantage, as he would later receive a three-year deal from Newcastle United, one of the most prestigious football teams in the Premier League. Rangers' Newcastle career started brilliantly, with the Londoner putting in some memorable performances in both the under-18s and reserves. 15 goals for the former and 7 goals for the latter ensured that Rangers' star continued to rise. However, there were rumours throughout Newcastle about a certain young footballer who was associated with the wrong crowd. Ranger made his first team appearance in August 2009 in a team against West Bromwich Albion and many Geordies believed that they had found a new gem. Despite constant rumours of off-field antics, Ranger continued to show out for Newcastle's first team. He made 25 appearances in 2009 to 2010 and 24 the next season. Following Newcastle's swift return to the Premier League, Rangers' performances were rewarded with a five-year contract in December 2010. But sadly, this would prove to be a massive mistake on Newcastle's part because just a year later, Ranger would cause a media storm after uploading a photograph of him posing with a replica gun. He was lucky as he only received a warning from his team and remained a first-team player. However, his misconduct would continue as he was arrested in August 2011 on suspicion of assaulting a man in Newcastle city centre, leaving the victim unconscious in the street. This time, Ranger was dropped from Newcastle United's reserve team for three months, although he was later found not guilty of the charge. A month after this incident, Ranger was again charged with being drunk and disorderly in Newcastle's Cathedral Square. The charge came only days after he'd been reinstated back into the first team. He was fined and given a six-month conditional discharge and at this stage, his career at Newcastle United was hanging by the thread. Fast forward to 2013 and we find that one day after Ranger had posted a picture of his name in £20 notes on Instagram, he was arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting a woman while in a hotel room. Although Ranger was eventually cleared of this charge, the managers at Newcastle United finally had enough and terminated Ranger's contract by mutual consent. From 2013 to 2016, Ranger would continue to play for a number of smaller clubs including Swindon Town, Blackpool and Southend United. During this period, he would also make frequent appearances and media headlines, often for the wrong reasons. Once again in March 2014, Ranger was arrested on suspicion of causing damage to a taxi in Liverpool. He later pleaded guilty to criminal damage and was fined £1,000 and was ordered to pay compensation to the taxi driver for breaking his window. 
35 days later, Ranger would again be charged with criminal damage after kicking down the communal front door of an apartment block in Swindon and allegedly striking his female companion in the face three times. Because of this incident, Swindon Town would also terminate Ranger's contract by mutual consent in May. So by now, you would think that Ranger had learnt his lesson and turned his life around, right? Well, think again, because in 2016, Ranger was charged with conspiracy to defraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering via online bank fraud. Consequently, he was sentenced to eight months in prison in 2017. So the main question by now is why? Why couldn't Ranger keep his life on track and why was he so heavily involved in crime? He recently revealed why thanks to in-depth interviews by True Geordie and 360 TV where he would mention that the people he'd surround himself with would have a poor influence on his behaviour. So, uh, why are you robbing so watch this now, watch this, listen to this. When I was growing up, I'm just that's all I used to see, rubberies, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I wasn't I wasn't born with a silver spoon at the mouth, but I wanted the little extra bits I could get. So I started taking people's phones, doing all the, the madness, like and I'm seeing people who are older than me doing the same thing. It wasn't right, obviously not, but um it's a it's but about you knew learning. the career path you could have had at that point, so you weren't like not you weren't well, at the age of fifteen, you don't really know what's gonna happen. Like, yeah, you're good at football, you're good. But a lot of people get told that and get nowhere. So mm. it was like mm, I was in two minds and I was going to Romford, semi pro, but um Crystal Palace released me. There was so much things going on. Then I went to a B Tech college, um called Pro Tech in Barnet, no Southgate. And then um, from there, I was still doing my robberies now and again, here and there, not too tough with a few of my people. Everything was getting to me, the money. Bro, man started doing dumb gambling, like, I started doing some dumb stuff, fam. Having wrong man around me, buying things for certain people. Like, bro, I, yeah. I could get into it, but I'm not even gonna go deep like that, but I was doing some dumb things, bro. And I regret that, I mean, I have regrets, bro. Yeah. It's fast lane, I was in a fast lane, getting contract from the contract. Ranger recently rejoined Southend United, who compete in League 2 and has since received heavy backlash from fans and critics as they believe he will continue to misbehave and tarnish the club's name in the long run. He believes that his legal history has led him to having one more chance to continue his career as a football player and prove that he can behave. He also plans to release a biography in the near future that he hopes young troubled individuals will read and learn from his past mistakes. So. What's your opinion of Niall Ranger? Do you think he's a lost hope? Bound to commit more crimes in the future? Or can he actually change? Let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.